are back. This is the Now Morning Show coming to you live from Maraval Road here in Trinidad and Tobago at TTT Limited. Of course, we are the big bad network with radio stations, TV station, and of course, social media. Now, on Friday, December 18th, U.S.-based Trinidad and Tobago medical doctor, Dr. Denzel Robertson, received the COVID-19 vaccine uh, based He's based in Jackson, Mississippi, and we're going to talk with him a bit about his work as well as what it felt like to receive this vaccine. Good morning, Dr. Robertson. Good morning. How are you doing? How is Mississippi doing? I know you are a frontline worker in two hospitals, not one, but two hospitals. What, That's tell correct. us about what's happening in Mississippi right now before I jump into the vaccine. Okay. Well, we've certainly been under a crisis situation in Mississippi with the COVID virus. Um, we have seen surge levels of the virus since around Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, most of our hospitals are filled to capacity. Our ICUs are filled. Um, we re really have no beds available for any more patients at this point. So uh, we're in the throes of it. And you have, um, you, have re you received the vaccine. I guess for you frontline workers, the vaccine is good news. And you yourself received the vaccine on Friday, um, but this vaccine was developed in record time. So were you not at all concerned by this? I was, I mean, um, you know, like everyone else, I had some concerns about the vaccine, um, but I did some research and, you know, I looked at some of the studies that were done and um, I'm pretty satisfied that the vaccine is effective and it's also relatively safe. Right. So um, as you said, I got the vaccine and so far I'm doing great. And what was the process like? And is this the Pfizer vaccine we're speaking about? Yes, I, I received the Pfizer vaccine. Mm -hmm. What was the process like for you to um, receive it? So the Pfizer vaccine is a, is a two-stage vaccine. So the first uh, shot um, I received on Friday, and the second shot I'm going to receive in three weeks' time. Um, and I think, as everyone knows, the Pfizer vaccine is supposed to be 95% effective right. in preventing um, the COVID uh, virus. Um, so far, as I said, I'm doing great. I haven't had any side effects or any symptoms from the vaccine. And um, I'm just very happy that the vaccine is here. Um, I, we hope that it's going to be able to um, be given to the general population and that we can slow the, uh, the spread of the virus. So let's talk about the side effects. You mentioned that you haven't received, you ha you're not seeing any side effects thus far. But what are some of the side effects uh, one would expect coming out of the vaccine? Well, some of the side effects include like just pain from the vaccine at the site of the vaccine. Um, you can have like generalized muscle aches, um, maybe a little bit of low-grade fever, um, feeling of weakness and dizziness. Um, but those are the main symptoms um, that, that one can experience from the vaccine. Let's, let's understand what the vaccine is a bit. Is it that uh, you're being injected with the virus itself? Uh, what is in this vaccine? Do you know? Yes, so, so the, the Pfizer vaccine is what is called a messenger RNA vaccine, which is a small genetic code that is developed in the lab synthetically from the virus and is introduced into the body. And when it's done that, it basically um, causes our cells to produce what is called an S antigen, right. uh, which then causes our body to produce antibodies and uh, other neutralizing factors to help prevent us from getting the infection. So it is not a live vaccine. It is not uh, what we call an attenuated vaccine or a uh, dead vaccine. It's actually a small piece of genetic code from the virus that is introduced into the body. Mm -hmm. And do you expect to, can persons expect to be uh, this as a preventive measure against getting COVID-19 or, or, you know, if you've had it, would you get it again if you get the vaccine? Does it prevent right. you from getting it again? It does prevent you from getting it again, correct? Okay. So it is recommended that you get the vaccine, whether or not you've had the, the virus in the past, um, and it does, in fact, prevent you from getting it again. Okay. You must be hearing and seeing the concerns from all over the world, including Trinidad and Tobago, from persons who, you know, are saying, I'm not taking that vaccine, and it's going to be one that's going to be mandatory if I have to travel, so I'm not going to be traveling again. Should persons be that concerned? I don't think so. Um, you know, I, you know, as I said, I've looked at all the studies. Uh, there were more than 20,000 participants in the trials. Um, and so far, there haven't been any serious side effects from the vaccine. Now, obviously, this is a new vaccine. Uh, we certainly don't know what some of the long-term 
um, consequences might be. But I would encourage everyone um, to go ahead and get the vaccine um, if they can. But the challenge um, is, though, really Dr. Robertson, is that, you know, of course, the Pfizer vaccine is so expensive. And then the way it needs to be frozen, the, the, the temperature at which it needs to be held is so low that it makes it almost prohibitive for persons of Trinidad and Tobago. We're probably waiting on those inside of the COVAX, probably out of Oxford. I don't even know if Moderna can reach Trinidad and Tobago. Right. Yeah, the, the Pfizer vaccine has to be kept at temperatures of minus 60 to minus 80 degrees, um, which is a bit of prohibitive. Um, the Moderna vaccine, which is actually just being released this week, um, does not have to be kept at such uh, temperatures. And I think that um, vaccine probably would be better suited to uh, recipients in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as some of the other vaccines that are coming down the pipeline, like Johnson & Johnson and mm -hmm. so on. So, Oh, Johnson & Johnson as well. Okay, now let's take a twist and talk a bit about you. You are a former Fatima old boy. That's a, that's a plus right there, <laughs> if I could be a little exactly. bit biased. Uh, tell <laughs> us what it's been like working in two hospitals as a frontline worker in Mississippi. Um, it's been it's been quite an experience. I mean, it's 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 been tough. I mean, it's as you said with the COVID virus. I mean, we've been um, inundated with a lot of critically sick patients, um, but it's been quite an experience. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm happy to be able to provide my services to take care of um, these very sick patients. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm here representing Trinidad and Tobago, um, flying the flag proudly. Um, I'm not the only Trinidad and Tobago doctor here. As a matter of fact, there's another physician here as well from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh -huh. um, and we're here, you know, we're, we're here as Trini boys, you know. Yes. With the accent and all. Very proud. You know, that's all the time we have today. I want to say special thanks to your sister, who's our very own program manager, Diane Robertson. And congratulations on the work that you've been doing representing Trinidad and Tobago, working on the front lines. Continue to be safe and keep us posted as to how you progress having take been one of the first out of the gate to have received the Pfizer vaccine. Thank you very much, Dr. Robertson. Thank you for having me and have a Merry Christmas. Same to you.